So you've been scrolling through social media and have seen people like me on YouTube making stuff like Mandalorian helmets or stuff like this, and you want to know what 3D printing really is. So whether you want to make stuff like this or make something that's actually useful, 3D printing is a gateway to a whole new world of creativity and problem solving in your life. This video is going to be your complete guide to 3D printing from going from knowing absolutely nothing to getting your first successful print off the bed. So whether you have questions like how expensive is it going to be for me to get started, how tech savvy do I need to be to learn how to do this, or do I need to learn how to 3D model or any other questions like that, I'll be answering all of your basic questions in today's video. So without further ado, this is your complete guide to 3D printing 2024. To be clear, before I start the video, this is all for FDM printing. Pretty much 3D printers that have the spool of plastic that comes down and it goes layer by layer by layer going around circles. This is what that video is for, not for resin printing. That'll be a different video that I'm going to make. That's almost a whole different hobby. You get kind of the same result, right? A 3D print, but it is like worlds different from what 3D printing is. So if you're looking for resin printing, that video will be coming out soon. But for now, this is just for FDM printing, PLA, plastic that kind of stuff. So I'm sure the biggest question that you guys have is how expensive is this all going to be? There are a couple of different things you're going to need to get started in this hobby. So I'm going to put a list right here of all the different prices and then I'll put the total below so that way you guys can keep track. So deciding which 3D printer you want to start with is the biggest question. There's tons of brands out there. There's tons of models. There's different sizes, speeds. And surprisingly enough, with all of those different brands and models out there, the running printer that seems to be everybody's go-to for a starting printer, and it was for myself as well, is the Creality Ender 3. Running at about only $170-ish on Amazon, it's still one of the most affordable and reliable printers that you could ever get. If you do get it, you're going to learn everything about 3D printing because eventually everything's going to kind of go on that printer. The bed, the tubes, the extruder, even the nozzles, you're going to learn how to replace all those different parts and you're going to know what you're talking about and what to look for when you need to fix a printer. So if you're really trying to get into this hobby and you're serious about it and you want to learn the machines and how everything works, the Creality Ender 3 is probably your go-to machine. Some people don't want to deal with all that struggle and you really don't have to anymore. A lot of the machines nowadays come pretty well made with a lot of the upgrades that the Ender 3 just doesn't have. Right now on Elegoo's site, they're selling the Neptune 3 Pro for I think 150 something. I think it was really low. That's cheaper than the Ender 3 and you're going to have a lot more features on it than the Ender 3 does. You're going to have the auto leveling, the PEI sheet. It's going to be able to print faster and a little bit of a better quality. Touch screen, better fans, all that stuff is upgraded. I'm sure some of you guys out there are asking, is there anything that prints faster than those printers or prints larger than them? Or maybe you're already aiming to print something like an Iron Man suit or car parts or something that's large. And while the answer is yes to both of them, I wouldn't recommend jumping straight into that. There are plenty of printers that are out there that can print super fast, but they're gonna run you about $1,000, $800 for stuff like the K1C or the Bamboo Carbon 1X, X1, Bamboo X1 Carbon, there we go. There are printers out there that are very large size printers, like the, I think it's the Ender 5 and the Neptune 4 Pro that can run you about five, $600. But unless you're certain that you wanna stick with this hobby, I'd recommend just starting with one of the smaller ones. That way you can get into the hobby and learn stuff about it without having to break the bank. So I'd say budget yourself around 180 to $200 just for the printer. You'll be able to get some of the best printers on the market for that price. Once you've decided which printer you want, the next thing you're going to need to get is some filament. You can go on Amazon and look up all different colors and different types of filament and different brands. Really, the only thing that you should be thinking about is PLA or PLA Plus, PLA Pro, anything like that. And you kind of just want to stick with that for now. There are PETGs, TPUs, ABSs, and different filaments like that, but those are a little bit trickier. Some printers can't print TPU, which is like the flexible filament. So if you use it on a printer that can't print it, you're going to mess up your printer. So for now, most printers out there in the market, I'm pretty sure every single one of them ever, runs PLA as sort of like the standard streamline going filament. If you go on the Amazon, you can get a roll of filament for about $15 to $20. And I really wouldn't spend too much more than that just to kind of get used to the hobby first. There's metallics and multicolors and translucents and glow in the darks and wooden carbon fiber infused. There's all different kinds of filaments out there and it's really cool. But uh, just start off with regular PLA. Maybe just go with the brand that you get. So say you bought the Ender 3 or the Ender 3 V3, whatever they call it anymore, or an Elegoo or an Anchor Maker. 
Just go with their brand. Just get like a black and a white just to kind of give yourself the ability to print. I'd probably start off with about two rolls if you're going to be printing a lot of stuff to try to test it out and see if you like it. I'd probably set aside about $30 for that as well. Now the biggest thing, the actual files that you need to 3D print, you don't have to spend any money on that. And you also don't need to learn how to 3D model and become a modeler to print stuff on your 3D printer. Websites like Thingiverse and Printables have free files on there that you can start 3D printing. And they have stuff all the way from little knickknacky stuff, little low poly Pokemon, all the way up to Iron Man helmets that you can motorize. So before you go and start spending money, there's websites out there like Do3D, which is like a lot of uh, cosplaying for Star Wars and Marvel and stuff like that. Just go on to Thingiverse or Printables or just look up free STL files and look up anything you want and make sure that they're from a safe location and just click the download button and you got it. Okay, so you've got your 3D printer, you've got the filament, and you've got the file. The only thing you need to do now is slice the file. This is the biggest thing and I think probably the most confusing part for a lot of people getting into the hobby is they don't understand why they can't just take the file and move it to the SD card and then just print it out. You have to slice it. So pretty much the way a slicer works is it takes a 3D model, puts it into a program, and then will cut it into let's say a thousand different layers and it slices it a thousand times to give you a a G code to give you a G code so once it's done slicing and it slices up the model into however many layers it needs to complete it it'll give you a G code and then that's what you put onto your SD card and insert it into the 3d printer so all you're gonna do to download the slicer is type in Cura in Google once you're on here click on the first link download for free and then select what computer machine OS you have. Once Cura is booted up for the first time, it'll ask you what machine you have. Just follow the prompt, don't change any of the settings, just select the machine that you have. And then all you're going to do is click on this small file up here. Select the STL file that you'd like to print and click open. Once you can see the model in here, all you're going to do is click slice. Now I have my specific settings on already, so it probably won't have the tree supports and some of the build plate adhesion. This is what it'll actually look like once you've printed it out. And you can use this over here on the right to kind of look through your model to see what the infill looks like and all that. But basically, once you've sliced it, this is your G-code, and you just click Save to Removable Drive and eject it, and then plug it into your printer. Once you've done that, then you can go ahead and hit the print button on your 3D printer. And one more thing you could do before you start printing off crazy things like Iron Man elements and stuff like that. Some of the printer's SD cards come with a file that's already sliced. Go ahead and run that, just test it, see how it comes out, or even go onto Thingiverse, and I'll link the file down below for a calibration cube. And if you print that, it'll kind of show you if there's any ghosting or lining on the x y and z axis and if that's perfect and you're getting prints off that's all you really need to know there are a lot more advanced stuff different techniques that you can have but as far as knowing absolutely nothing about 3d printing to getting your first print off of the bed that's everything that you need to know it's really not that complicated the hardest part i think for most people is figuring out how to slice the file because they download stuff and they put it on the card and it's not working. So I hope I was able to help you guys learn how to 3D print and was able to teach someone how to completely go from having no idea how to 3D print or what it even was maybe to getting a printer and getting your print off the bed for the first time. If I did and I was able to do that, please let me know down in the comments below. That'd be awesome. I appreciate you guys for watching the video. And if you'd like to see more like this, let me know. And I'm also thinking about starting kind of just, uh, not, not so much of a series, but sort of more informational videos like this how to get better prints off from your printer settings different tips to keep your filament at the best condition that you can different slicer settings um different methods and different everything that everything is different thank you guys for watching this guide and i'll see you guys in the next video